As we gaze up at the night sky, it's hard not to wonder, are we truly alone in the universe? With billions of stars and countless planets stretching across the vast expanse of space, the possibility of extraterrestrial life seems almost certain. Yet despite our best efforts to search the stars, we still haven't made contact. In today's video, we'll explore five theories that just might explain why we haven't met extraterrestrials yet. From the zoo hypothesis, where advanced civilizations might be watching us from afar, to the Medea hypothesis, which suggests life might be its own worst enemy, and the Great Filter, a potentially fatal barrier that all civilizations must face. We'll also dive into neo-catastrophism, the idea that catastrophic events might be wiping out civilizations before they can search the universe for life, and the dark forest theory, which paints a dark picture of a universe where silence might be a survival strategy. Join us on Fireside Unsolved as we explore these mind-bending concepts and uncover the reasons why we haven't yet met our cosmic neighbors on episode 129, five mysterious explanations for why we're still alone in the universe. The zoo hypothesis is a speculative theory about why extraterrestrial civilizations might intentionally avoid contacting Earth. It suggests that advanced alien species could very well be aware of our planet and its inhabitants, but refrain from interfering to allow natural development and evolution. Much like a zoo, where humans observe animals without interacting directly. This would give human civilization the time and space to evolve without external influence. The zoo hypothesis is built on a few key ideas. First, it suggests that aliens might avoid contacting us to prevent interfering with Earth's natural growth. By staying away, they allow human cultures, biology, and technology to develop on their own without outside influence. Second, the theory assumes that advanced alien civilizations might have ethical rules about not disturbing other species. They could be waiting for humanity to reach certain levels of progress, like advanced technology or strong moral values, before making contact, ensuring we're ready for such a big event. Lastly, the hypothesis points out that aliens might avoid us to protect themselves. Even with their advanced technology, making direct contact with humans could create risks for them without offering much benefit. So staying hidden might be their safest choice. Ultimately, the zoo hypothesis presents a vision of a universe populated with civilizations that operate under a set of shared, non-interfering principles, ensuring that humanity reaches the necessary level of wisdom and maturity before contact occurs. The Medea hypothesis, proposed by paleontologist Peter Ward, argues that life, particularly multicellular life, might be inherently self-destructive. The name comes from the mythological character Medea, who killed her own children, symbolizing Earth's potential to destroy the life it sustains. Ward suggests that life, especially microorganisms, has often been the trigger for catastrophic events that reverted Earth to a microbial-dominated state, conditions that lasted for most of Earth's history. Several historical mass extinctions highlight this self-destructive pattern. About two and a half billion years ago, during the Great Oxidation Event, oxygen-producing microbes began releasing large amounts of oxygen into the air. While this was a big step for life as we know it, the oxygen was toxic to many existing organisms, causing massive die-offs. It also reduced methane, a gas that helps trap heat, which contributed to a global freeze called the Huronian glaciation. Later, approximately 675 million years ago, microbes removed a lot of carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. With less of this heat-trapping gas, the planet experienced extreme glaciation, where ice covered nearly the entire Earth. Then, around 450 million years ago, during the late Ordovician mass extinction, the growth of land plants may have reduced carbon dioxide even further. This caused the planet to cool and led to another major freeze. There were also periods called euxinic events, where the oceans became low in oxygen, but high in toxic hydrogen sulfide due to the activity of certain microbes. These toxic conditions contributed to massive die-offs, including the Permian-Triassic extinction about 252 million years ago, which was one of the most devastating mass extinctions in Earth's history. Ward also suggests that the current climate change and biodiversity loss are part of this ongoing self-destructive cycle. He predicts that in 500 to 900 million years, Earth's climate will warm as the sun brightens causing a drop in carbon dioxide levels that will make it impossible for plants to survive, signaling the end of complex life on Earth. Despite this, 
Ward remains cautiously optimistic. He proposes that intelligent life, such as humans, might develop the ability to prevent or mitigate these destructive cycles, potentially avoiding the fate of the Medea hypothesis. The Great Filter is a concept that attempts to explain why we have yet to detect extraterrestrial civilizations, despite the vastness of the universe and the high likelihood of habitable planets. It suggests that there is a significant barrier, or filter, in the process of life evolving from its earliest stages to becoming an advanced civilization capable of interstellar communication. This barrier could make intelligent extraterrestrial life exceedingly rare. The idea was first proposed by economist Robin Hansen in his 1996 essay, The Great Filter, Are We Almost Past It? Hansen argued that the lack of observable extraterrestrial civilizations implies that something about the progression of life from abiogenesis, the origin of life from non-living matter, to advanced technological societies, is far more difficult than it appears. This difficulty can be thought of as a filter that drastically reduces the number of civilizations capable of being detected. One possibility is that the great filter lies in the early stages of life. This could mean that the leap from non-living materials to living organisms is incredibly rare, or that it's extremely uncommon for simple life to evolve into complex multicellular organisms. If this is true, humanity has already overcome the great filter, making our existence an extraordinary and rare achievement. Another possibility is that the filter occurs before civilizations reach the ability to travel between stars. Advanced societies may frequently self-destruct, whether through nuclear war, environmental collapse, or other catastrophic events. This would mean intelligent life is often short-lived, which could explain why we found no evidence of other civilizations. The most unsettling idea is that the great filter lies in our future. If humanity hasn't yet encountered it, this could mean our civilization faces an unavoidable existential threat. This looming challenge could be something we've yet to identify or fully understand representing a barrier that most, if not all, advanced civilizations fail to survive. Neocatastrophism is a theory that suggests that life on Earth and other planets in our galaxy may have been delayed by catastrophic events, such as gamma ray bursts. Gamma ray bursts are incredibly powerful explosions that occur when massive stars collapse or explode, sending out intense radiation that could wipe out life on nearby planets. According to this hypothesis, the Milky Way galaxy has been forming Earth-like planets for around 9 billion years, and most of these planets are older than Earth itself. In fact, most of the stars in the habitable zone, the region around a star where life could exist, are older than the Sun. This means that other civilizations could be billions of years ahead of us. So, why haven't we detected them? The answer, according to neocatastrophism, is that catastrophic events, like gamma ray bursts, might have repeatedly wiped out life on planets, preventing the rise of intelligent beings capable of interstellar communication and travel. Neocatastrophism suggests that, as the galaxy ages, these events become less frequent, and the window for intelligent life to emerge gradually becomes longer. This would make it more likely that, in the future, galaxies could be filled with advanced civilizations. However, the window for intelligent life may not have opened yet for many planets due to these repeated catastrophes. In simpler terms, neocatastrophism argues that life in our galaxy might have been delayed by cosmic disasters that killed off complex life forms before they could develop. As the galaxy gets older and these events happen less often, the chance of intelligent civilizations appearing increases, which could explain why we haven't found aliens yet despite the vast number of potentially habitable planets. The dark forest hypothesis suggests that there are many alien civilizations throughout the universe, but these civilizations remain silent and hidden due to the fear of being destroyed by another unknown, hostile civilization. According to this theory, any spacefaring civilization would see other intelligent life as a potential threat, and thus, civilizations would destroy any signs of life before making contact. As a result, the universe appears silent, with no detectable signals from alien civilizations. The hypothesis plays on the idea that, in a universe filled with limited resources, the best strategy for survival would be to eliminate potential threats before they have a chance to grow and challenge your own species. This shoot first and ask questions later approach explains the lack of communication between intelligent life forms, as any civilization might consider broadcasting its existence as too dangerous. In terms of game theory, the dark forest hypothesis presents a scenario where civilizations, unaware of others' intentions, must act in their own self-preservation, making decisions like destroying another civilization revealing their existence, or remaining silent to avoid potential extinction. 
Overall, the dark forest hypothesis presents a chilling explanation for the silence of the cosmos, proposing that the universe is filled with civilizations, just not the kind we can detect, because they're too afraid to reveal themselves. As we've explored, the universe is full of mysteries, and the question of why we seem to be alone is one of the biggest. From the zoo hypothesis, where advanced civilizations silently watch us evolve, to the Medea hypothesis, which suggests life may be its own worst enemy, these theories offer haunting possibilities. The Great Filter reminds us of the challenges life faces, while neo-catastrophism warns of sudden cosmic disruptions. And perhaps the most chilling of all, the dark forest theory, where silence is the key to survival in a dangerous cosmic wilderness. Each explanation raises profound questions about our place in the universe and what it means to be intelligent, fragile beings searching for connection. Are we truly alone or simply isolated by design, circumstance, or fear? Maybe the answers are out there, waiting for us to discover or to understand them when the time is right. Thank you for joining us on this episode on Fireside Unsolved. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share your thoughts in the comments below. Be safe, and we'll see you next time. Fireside. Thank you for joining us for another episode of Fireside Unsolved. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe to help the channel grow. Until next time, take it easy and be easy, you filthy bastards. <laughs>